And today's game is being brought to you by the Mavis Tire Company. And by Parkway Limousine Service. And by the County Boys and Men's Shop. And by the House of Honda in Mamaroneck. And by UA Columbia Cablevision of Westchester. Welcome to another live edition of Extra Points here at Cable 3. I'm John Caridio, and for the next half hour, we are going to review and preview all of the action around Section 1. As always, we're going to take a look at the brand new top 10s, and I say brand new because over in the large school division, we've got a brand new number 1 and a brand new number 2. We'll get to that a little later on. And of course, we've got the ever popular play of the week, which comes to us this evening from Rye High School. And speaking of the Garnets, that is the major portion of tonight's program as we will review Rye's seventh win of the season, the 27 to nothing whitewashing of the Eastchester Eagles. And in our studio tonight, we will have the head coach of the Rye Garnets, Dino Gar, and a gentleman who has the haircut of them all. We'll have in our studio our Cable 3 MVP, Sal Giglio. And that's all coming up. And of course, you can join us on the program by calling us at 235-5821. There it is right there, 235 Five eight two one, and we're looking forward to getting some good phone calls. Where do you see the haircut by Sal? You may want to know who does his hair. But as we get set for another edition of Extra Points, once again, Mother Nature played havoc with the football schedule around Section One this weekend. Most of the teams did did get to play in the mud on Saturday, while others were postponed to either Monday or Sunday. As you will see, the weather may have created some havoc with the offensive plans of the coaches but it did create some interesting games with some very surprising results. Come back with us now to those glorious days in the mud and mire as we take a look at all of the action on the Week in Review. And in the big rematch in advance to the championship game in the CHSFL playoff. The Mounties outgained the prep 284 yards to 178 with Lou Bedillo leading the way with 93 yards and one touchdown. Iona Prep has one game left with New Rochelle. The Raiders clinched at least a tie for first place in League 3 with a win over White Plains. For the sixth time this year, Larry Holloway rushed for over 100 yards, finishing with 156 and two touchdowns. We had technical difficulties getting highlights of this game, but don't worry, our crack engineering staff is working on the problem. Nelson Cedric rushed for 170 yards and scored two TDs for the Crusaders' third win of the year. The defense was also good, allowing only three first downs all game. Tumbleitis was plaguing New Rochelle again Monday against the Gryphons of Ramapo. Every time the Purple Wave offense got going, a fumble would end the drive. Wayne Wiener's 26-yard field goal in the third quarter gave Ramapo the 12-7 lead. But then the Huguenots would start up the field, and that Fumbleitis would flare up again, and the defense was on the field again. Still trailing by five with time running out, New Rochelle quarterback John McNipp looked deep for the winning score, but all he found was the game was over. 12-7 the final with New Rochelle dropping to 3-4, and four, and Ramapo goes even at 4-4. Four and four. The Tigers committed six turnovers, including two fumbles inside their own 20-yard line that both led to TDs, and the Cornhuskers had their shutout. One bright spot, the Marinex defense held Yorktown to 99 total yards. The Panthers ended their three-game losing streak in this league's seven affair. Jim Pitaro rushed 33 times for 120 yards and scored four touchdowns. The fifth time this year he's rushed for over 100 yards. Senior fullback Tim Fields returned to kick off 79 yards for a score as the Falcons extended their winning streak to two games. Fields finished the day with 149 yards and three touchdowns. 
It rained on Saturday for Ardsley coach Harvey Silverbush, but for Mickey Spalletta and his Pelham Pelicans, the sun was shining as Pelham won a defensive struggle with the Panthers six to nothing. Both defenses were solid as each team had trouble moving the ball in the mud and muck. The only score of the day came in the first quarter on a 13-yard pass from Mike Brescia to Gary Valente. But the big story was defensive lineman turned running back Carlo Bordeaux, who rushed for 119 yards on 26 carries in his dream come true. Helen is now 5-3 on the year, while Ardsley drops to 4-3. The Bulldogs had 310 yards in total offense, led by Sean Brady's 121 yards in their eighth win of the season. Chris Balducci picked up 101 yards on only five carries, setting up this weekend's conference championship game against Bronxville. And the Broncos continued to roll along. Tom Priori completed 13 passes for 196 yards and three touchdowns, two of them to Dave Stiers, who now has 11 TD catches on the year. It was another League 8 win for the Broncos. The Rhinek Panthers showed us again this weekend. They sure can run the football, but on Saturday they ran into a stone wall by the name of Pleasantville. After 19 straight points, Pleasantville gave up two scores, one by Lamont Tucker and the other by Joe Brown, but held on for the 19-14 win. The defense of Pleasantville gives the Panthers a 3-3-1 record, while the Panthers of Rhinek drop 2-6-2. The Tigers suffered their sixth straight defeat and their second shutout in a row in this League 9 meeting. Bears quarterback John Bernson completed four passes for 90 yards and two touchdowns in Briarcliff's fourth win of the year. A splendid performance by what showed up of the Dodds Ferry Band, and it must have helped as the Eagles defeated Valhalla Monday 13-6. The defense was again tough, but so were the Vikings. Larry Diffley caught the game's opening score, an 11-yarder from Scott Rich. But even though the Eagles had the 6-0 lead and had some big plays throughout the ball game, they did have trouble putting the ball in the end zone. Gary Krajewski's 34-yard run was the game winner as that came late in the fourth quarter, but it took a goal-line stand with one minute left to play at the end of the game to lock up win number six for Dobbs Ferry. The Valhalla Vikings had some big plays of their own, but dropped to 3-3-1 three, three and one on the season. And the Wildcats in their season finale win their third in a row. Jim Grandolfo threw six passes all to his brother Tony for 111 yards and one touchdown. And for this Tuesday, that'll do it for the Week in Review on Extra Point. Well, the bad weather did not put a damper on some other fine performances around Section 1 this past weekend. There were a pair of explosive performances in the North Rockland Mount Vernon game. Knights running back Darlos James rushed for 172 yards and scored three times. But Raiders quarterback Ted Cooney completed 13 passes for 148 yards and three touchdowns as North Rockland nipped Mount Vernon 28-27. John J. Sean Scott upped his lead in the Section 1 scoring race with four TDs and 190 yards in the Indians' 27-7 win over Hendrick Hudson. Scott now has 19 touchdowns for 122 points. Two quarterbacks had fine throwing days this weekend. Lakeland QB Dave Goodwin was 22 of 37 for 279 yards, while suffering QB Dan Munoz completed nine passes for 148 yards and three touchdowns, all of them coming in the first half of the Mounties 23 to nothing win over Clarkstown South. And speaking of fine performances, do you know which team leads Section 1 in points allowed with 19 and also has the longest active winning streak in Section 1 at 18 straight? What was that? Did you say the Rye Garnets? You're absolutely right. And in just a moment after this short timeout, we'll meet Garnets head coach Dino Gar, who is now a perfect 7-0 on Cable 3, and our player of the game, Sal Giglio, from the Garnets 27-0 whitewashing of Eastchester. And you can join in the fun by calling now at 235-5821 when this live edition of Extra Points continues here at Cable 3 in just a moment. here in the Rochelle for extra points and you can join us by calling 235-5821 
just in case you might want to have a chat with these two gentlemen sitting here, the head coach of the Garnet, Chino Gar, and our player of the game, Sal Gillion. We'll get to that segment of the program in just a moment. But as you know, in the eight games that Rye has played this season, five of them have been shutouts, making Rye the stingiest team in all of Section 1, allowing only 19 points all year long. And this past Saturday, the storyline was pretty much the same. Rye controls the football, made the defensive plays when they had to, and victory number seven was put in the book. East Chester was this week's victim, just another team that believes in the power of the Garnet. Not fit for man or beast. No, that's not a beast, just Rye coach Dino Gar. But he may have felt like one early when the Garnets began the game a little off-key. Sal Gilio fumbled in midfield early on in the first quarter, giving the Eagles excellent field position. But as has been the case all season, the Garnets' defense rose to the occasion. Here, Gunnar Huber gets the quarterback, Butch Burrow, one of five sacks on the day. After getting the ball back, our game MVP shows what he is made of, busting tackles and bringing the football down to the five-yard line. And that set up the first score of the day, Joe King from a yard out. And with four seconds left in the first quarter, Rye led 6-0. Gilio had one more bruising run for East Chester, and he put it to them with this six-yard scamper with a minute 19 left in the second quarter, and Rye led at the intermission 14-0. In the second half, just when it looked like the Eagles were ready to roll down the field, the Garnet defense stepped up to shut the door. The stingiest defense in all of Section 1 can take credit for Rye's next score. After sacking Burrow at the one-yard line and following a short punt, reserve back Scott Newman found a lane, and three yards later, Rye led 20 to nothing in the fourth quarter. And the secondary had a good game as well. Cornerback Ricky Lehman stops another eagle drive with the first of two interceptions by Rye. Sack number five on the day belonged to middle linebacker Tom Cotaspati as Rye sack. continued to keep East Chester pinned in their own end. Sack number five by the Garnet defense. Even an intercepted punt by Robert Wooten of East Chester didn't work as Ray Delacoli came in untouched to make the tackle. So with just 33 seconds left to play, Jerome Kenny finds an alley from 11 yards out for the fourth rushing touchdown on the day for the Rye Garnet. Jerome Kenny for the Garnet, virtually untouched. And just for good measure, the defense closed the book on this one as Burrow looked for one last miracle, but John Moshia picked off the pass on the last play of the game, and Rye had their seventh win, their fifth shutout of the season, 27 to nothing over East Chester, who dropped to three and five on the year. Well, during the game of the week on Saturday, you may have heard Ray Karowski call the Rye defense the Rat Pack, and if he did, here he is, the head cheese, Dino Carr, the head football coach at Rye High School. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, John, too. Okay. Uh, big ball game. Are you the Rat Pack? <laughs> well, we're whatever. Any whatever kind of identity, as long as we keep doing what we're doing, I'll take it. What are you doing? Why is the defense so stingy? Well, I think a lot of good things. First of all, we have some great ball players. Uh, they've been together for a long time, and I think uh, it starts with them. But I, I think a lot of it has to go with our, our coaching staff. I think Tommy Maloney and John Tomasi do a great job of preparing players for the team that we're going to play. And, um, and then the execution is out pretty much on, on the players out there, and they just do a real great job. I've always asked you when you thought the team has taken over your personality and when, when in effect, the team becomes the head coach and vice versa. Has it happened? Uh, you know, you've got a nice rapport between all of your coaching staff. That seems to be working nicely. Oh, yeah, I think that's a very big plus. And, and you know, plus we have a lot of good people coming out and turn out as really good. I think there's personalities there. They know I'm emotional, and they let me go and rant and rave a little bit, and then... Play football Maybe you don't want the team to take your personality. Well, I don't know. <laughs> a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> okay, sitting right next to him is our Cable 3 MVP. Are you ready for this? Can we throw this up on the air? How about that? What a hairdo from Sal Gillio, our Cable 3 MVP. That, of course, because right now the team is in the midst of the week-long celebration getting set for the Ryan Harrison <coughs> game on Saturday. Nice haircut, Sal. Thanks, Sal. Right. Beautiful job. Thanks for getting it done before the uh, show tonight. Really? Um, we want to congratulate you on an excellent effort, probably some of the, the best individual running that we've had on our game of the week all year long. I know Ray talked to you after the game was over about the uh, touchdown when you bruised off of a couple of tackles. 
How was it to run the football out there on Saturday? It looked pretty money and it looked pretty slick, huh? Well, it wasn't actually that slick because we were running on the grassy part of the field and I was able to get good footing when I was running the ball. And I guess when um, the defensive players were running, they'd have to stop when I'd make a cut and they'd just slide and you know, I'd be, I was able to still run and keep mm -hmm. my feet. Let me ask you about the attitude, mental attitude of, of this year's team. You guys are undefeated again like you were last year at this juncture of the season going into the Harrison game. Guys feel pretty confident right now? Oh, definitely. We came into this season, um, you know, we had a 10 game. We knew we were going to go to a bowl game and that was our objective. And we wanted to be 10 and 0. Right now, we have one tie, but 9 0 and 1 is going to be, a, you know, would make a, the season worth it. It would. Oh, yeah. Well, we all know one win over Harrison and the season is complete. The ball game's a little icing on the cake, but we'll get into that a little later on. 235-5821 is our phone number, and as I mentioned, we are live this evening here on Extra Points on a Tuesday night, and we're ready to go to the phones. So let's do it. Go ahead. You're on Extra Points. Hello. Uh, yes. Here. Okay. Well, Mike Morris, uh, we're going to have to get Mike off of the phones before <laughs> anyone. I want to remind you that in just a couple of minutes, we'll have for you our play of the week. As a matter of fact, we're going to take you back up to Rye High School for a sensational catch in the rain. And we will have that, of course, to look at the top 10 for both the large and the small schools. The large schools with a little resurgence among the top numbers. Let's go back to the phone. Go ahead. You're on extra point. Uh, hi, I have a question for Dino Gar. Okay. Uh, who would you rather play in the bowl game? Winchester or John Jay? That's good, because I was going to ask you the same thing. Uh, who would we rather play? Yeah. I don't know. There's a, it's, that's a tough question because last year we played John Jay, and uh, I, the reason why we probably uh, play John Jay again this year is because they'd be undefeated and we'd be undefeated, and it'd be for the number one ranking, I guess, with some kind of dispute over right. there. And I, you know, it's hard for me to understand how they're ranked ahead of us after we beat them last year. But well, other than that, make sure you're talking about the right <laughs> poll here, pal. All right, <laughs> we'll show you a little later. But I on. think that the, a lot of the players, I know a lot of the players would like to play Portsmouth again because they they did tie us this year, and we felt uh, that'd be a great game. Both games would be great games. Yeah. There's something about you guys have never beaten Portchester. Rise never beaten Portchester. I've only played them once. I oh, you've only played them. Yeah, I don't okay. deal with what's happened in the past. I, you know, we tied them this year. We should have beaten them, I thought. And uh, you know, so uh, it'd be a great game. John Jay would be a great game. Either matchup. Yeah, for you. Okay, two three five five eight two one is our number on this live edition of Extra Points. Go ahead, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, John. Yeah. Uh, I'd first like to, like to start out by saying. Uh, Congratulations to Ryan on their win, and nice head, Sal. <laughs> um, also, I'd like to know who you think is going to win the Beer Bowl this weekend between Irvington and Bronxville. The Beer Bowl? I haven't heard that one. Where'd that come from? I heard Budweiser sponsoring that one. Oh, oh, oh I, I get it now. Well, that's a possibility. Um, yeah. Bronxville and Irvington, a uh, game that's going to be for the conference championship in League 8, and we're going to have it this Saturday on Cable 3. Irvington looks very good. They, uh, I was with Vito Priori, as a matter of fact, earlier this afternoon, and he told me that defense will be the key. If you can stop Conklin, then you've got to worry about Gonzalez, and then if you can get those two, then you've got to worry about Sean Brady. But on the other end, uh, Irvington has to contend with the passing of Tom Priori and their outstanding receiver, Dave Stites. It's a toss-up, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe give Irvington a one-point favor. Do you, do you know about Bronxville, Irvington? Sure, I think they're both fine still. Okay. And, uh, I, you know, like you say, it's a toss-up. Okay. Good. So I'm in pretty good shape then. Put some money on it? No. No, no okay. gamble. <laughs> two, three, five, five, eight, two, one is the number. Go ahead. You're on extra point. Oh, Sal, congratulations on your game this week. You played really well. And uh, my question is, how are you going to prepare for such a big game against Harris next week? Well, we have a lot of tradition, and you just have to get yourself prepared. There's no way you could, there's no, um, special way you get prepared. I mean, it's just a tradition you grew up with all in football, going through the grades, you know, 9th, 10th. And uh, this is my second time getting my hair cut like this, so I've been down the road before. Is it worth it? Definitely. With the wind, when, you walk, when you're in the brook and they're freezing, you're really warm inside there. Yeah. Dino, let me turn around and ask you the same thing. You played mm -hmm. in a Rye Harrison game. I won't say when, <laughs> um, but you've also coached. Uh, last year in, in the game that you won seven nothing, has the intensity died down at all since you when you played? Not at all. Has it gotten better? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think it's there, uh, better. You know, each class has its own uh, pride, and I think that that's the greatness about the game. I think again, I think we're very fortunate the players are and, and myself to be involved in such a great game, especially you know in, in what we're doing. It's a great game. 
of course, for, the, for everybody who's not familiar about it, uh, the whole week is, uh, is full of, of pep rallies and breakfasts and dinners. And, yeah. and I remember asking you this last year, let me ask you again, has, is it, does it take away from the preparation of the game itself, the, the nuts and bolts of the practice? A little bit, uh -huh. in a sense of, you know, the mental preparation that we'd like to put into it. But it also is a great part of the game, mm -hmm. and, and I would never trade anything for it uh, other than having what we have, because uh, it gets not only the players involved, but the whole school and the community, and it just involves everybody. I think both schools uh, testify will be proud of it. Right, Sal, I want to ask you, I remember last year um, they had the, uh, the team breakfast. Uh, the Friday before the game, we had Harrison uh, come on over. Everybody involved in the game came over. How, would, how did you like that? Well... Um, it really wasn't that special because, you know, you didn't really feel the intensity that I thought I would feel, but uh -huh. perhaps this year is going to be different, hopefully. New crop. Yeah, definitely. Okay, 235-5821 is our phone number. We are live this evening here on Extra Points. Go ahead, you're on the air. Hey, John. Yeah. What's more funny than a barrel of monkeys? What's more funny than a barrel of monkeys? Extra Points is more fun. No, no, you're wrong. What? Okay. Oh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> two three five five eight two one is our number on this live edition of Extra Points. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, our Player of the Week and our brand new top tens for this season. Don't forget that Rye will be taking on Harrison this coming Saturday, and that'll be over at the Harrison Junior High School. Game time's one p.m. I do believe. Okay. okay. Let's go back to the phone. Go ahead. You're on the air. <laughs> oh, I tell you. You know, we're trying to sit here. We've got to have made the effort to come down and answer some of your questions and we got a bunch of bozo heads out there calling us. Let's cut it out. 235-5821 is the phone number and we're live on Extra Point. We may not be live if this keeps up, I can tell you, and uh, we have to remember that we are fortunate and we're very happy that we can get the coaches and the players to take out some time to join us for a half an hour and you guys are just ruining it. All right? Enough said. Let's go back to the phone. Go ahead. You're on the air. Better be good. Um, I want to say Sky Storm Raiders are the best. <laughs> you, you people aren't listening to me. <laughs> it's a live audience. I don't know about that. Uh, they got one loss. I hate to point out to you, and there's a there's a large school up there that doesn't have a loss, but that question will be answered. Let's let's try again. Why not? We're on a roll now. We got another one. Let's go. Go ahead. You're on the air. Well, Mr. Gritty, yes, sir. What do you think of the outcome of the game of South Surrey for how it would have been if we would have played them in the ring? Played them in the ring. The great equalizer. Um, I don't think it could have been much closer than it was now. 13 to 6 was the final. Um, Valhalla, I don't, I really don't see how Dobbs Ferry would have lost except for that goal line stand that they had at the end of the game. Um, you may have a little trouble, uh, justifying a Valhalla win in rain or mud. Um, but that brings up a good point because in your game, a lot of people thought that because it was raining and it was muddy, it could have been the great equalizer as far as Eastchester was concerned. On paper, the definite underdog in that game. Yeah. Well, I think it uh, helped them a little bit in some aspects. Uh, I mean, we like to throw the ball a bit more than we did. Uh, but in the long run, I think he did, Sal had a great game, and I think our players really responded well to the conditions. Sal, do you care what the field conditions are when you play? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'd like a dry field because it's easier to make cuts, and I'm basically a slash type runner. Okay. Before we get out of here, um, just want to get a comment from you. What do you got to do to beat Harrison Saturday? Uh, we got to score more points. Okay. And keep them. That's why you're the head coach. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, I think we have to really control the ball game in terms of our offense, keeping the ball, and not giving them the big play. I think they have the capability of making some big plays, uh, either throwing the ball or running with it. They've got some good speed back. So we just can't give up the big play. And make them earn everything. And then I think defensively, we just, you know, just have to make sure that doesn't happen to us. Okay, and Sal, um, for you, you got to play. Last year you played at home against them, beat them seven nothing. Any difference uh, playing them over there in their home field? Uh, sometimes, but basically we're both going to have the uh, same amount of fans, so I don't think that's any different. But I like uh, when we win, the bus ride can be special. Yeah. Home. It'll be a little wet though, I think. Uh, yeah, you like going in that creek, don't you? Or the we, lake next to the lake this year, right? We come home. We come home. home. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, good for you. Thanks very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Great effort from you guys on Saturday, and we wish you the best of luck. And I'm, we're going to see you down on Memorial Field, it looks like. Hope you more luck. Yeah, we'll try once again. Okay, our thanks once again to Dino Gar and Sal Giulio for being our guests on this edition of Extra Points. For those of you who called the game on you, we'll give you another chance next week to see if we can do it a little better. All right, we're going to be back with the play of the week in our top tens right after this short break when Extra Points continues in just a moment.
Bears, it's time again for our play of the week. And we take you back to Nugent Stadium in Rye for this week's beauty. Rye has the ball in their own end when quarterback Steve Ridley looks for something down the sidelines. What he finds is Mark Sirhoff who makes a sensational one-handed grab and picks up a nifty 33 yards on the play. Spectacular enough on a sunny day, but with these field conditions, a simply remarkable catch from senior Mark Sirhoff or Rye, and that is our play of the week. Now let's move on to this week's top tens as we start with the large schools where for the first time in three weeks we have a new number one team and it is the Raiders of North Rockland. If you remember last year this looks very familiar. The Raiders at 7-1 and one, taking over from the Kingston Tigers who picked up a tie against Middletown on Saturday 14-14. So the Tigers move down to number three, and that allows the Raiders of Scarsdale to jump up from number three to number two. After their win against White Plains, they are also at seven and one. Roosevelt Indians are at number four. They had a big win against Our Lady of Lords Saturday. They are at four at six and one. Iona Prep, who lost to the Mount St. Michael, dropped from number four to number five. Fox Lane is at six. Suffern at eight. White Plains at, or Suffern at seven, pardon me. White Plains is at eight. Mayapak is at number nine. And the Knights of Mount Vernon, who lost a one-point decision to our brand-new number one team, they come in at number 10. So the Knights, for the second week in a row, make it into our top 10. Now we go over to the small schools. Not a lot of changes over there. For the sixth week in a row, the Garnets of Rye continue to hold on to the top spot. Not like that other poll. And the Garnets at 7-0 and 1 followed by the Rams of Port Chester at number two, also at 7-0-1. Oh, How about head coach Rich Albanizio complaining about the paper polls? That's something else. Irvington is at number three. They're undefeated at 8-0. No. John Jay of Katona Lewisboro, they're also undefeated at 8-0. No. So right there among the four teams, you may see either Rye play Port Chester or John Jay in the upcoming bowl game. Bronxville is at number five. J.F. Kennedy is at six. Byram Hill, seven. Dodds Ferry stays in it. They're at number eight with a six and two mark. Harrison is at nine. So next Saturday, the Rye Harrison game is number one against number nine. And Rye next is at number 10. Despite the loss to Pleasantville, they still remain at the number 10 spot with a record of six and two. Now, as we complete this extra point, I get it out, this extra point program, next up on the schedule, our final regular season game here on Cable 3, and it's a beauty. It is for the League 8 Championship and will feature the number five Broncos of Bronxville at 7-1 and one on the season. And they'll be taking on the number three Bulldogs of Irvington. And they are undefeated at 8-0. And, oh. and of course, we'll have same day coverage as always, Saturday night at 8, Sunday morning at 10, and then again Tuesday night at 8 following extra points. So Bronxville at Irvington, our next game of the week coming up here at Cable 3. Don't forget, next week here on Extra Points, we will have for you the complete Section 1 bowl lineup, including who's playing who and who's playing who where and what time. Well, of course, all the games will be down at Memorial Field in Mount Vernon. So that's going to do it for this edition of Extra Points. Our thanks again to Dino Gar and, and Sal Gilio for joining us on the program. And thanks to you for all your calls. Boy, did you really give it to us tonight. We'll see you again next week right here on Extra Points, Tuesday night at 6.30, 7.30 that is. Until then, I'm out of here. See you later, everybody.